know, you need an infrastructure to do it before the social media, and then you're also doing it in the social media age. You've been able to do it in both ends. So I guess if you could take us through, like, how you started. Well, um, when I first started, I didn't even know it was a thing because it wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. All I knew is I had a message that I wanted to get out, and I knew that nobody talks about men and what men go through. And the only time I saw it, like it was in a public thing, it was always done like at a barbershop, though, like amongst the uncles and the family. You could talk about what men go through. But it's this weird thing that it had to be pushed underground. So I said I wanted to bring it above ground, but I knew mm -hmm. I couldn't do it at a, uh, a traditional radio. They wouldn't have it. So what year was this roughly? Uh, 2008. Wow, okay. And then in 2009... I went to this thing called Blog Talk Radio, and it still exists, and it allows you to take phone calls and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we know. We know all too well. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh you know? <laughs> So I did that, and it got really big. But then the girl I was dating used to handle the stuff that I would do. Like, she really believed in the stuff that I was doing. She was like, she put it on. She started putting, recording me in the, in the little studio I had. But she would record me and then put it on YouTube. Okay. And okay. Uh, a video I did, the first video that ever went viral was a video called The Type of Black Woman Everybody Hates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And Let's they, go. And they put it yeah. on uh, World Star Hip Hop, and it blew up. And the next day I knew, I just had a whole bunch of emails, and I didn't know where they were coming from. And that was before I even knew what going viral was, because I had went viral before, but I had to go to the clinic and get a shot. Um, so, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, never, I get it, I get it. I'm old. Let, <laughs> let, 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 let him flow. Uh, but I. So what happened was, um, she just kept putting things on there, and it just kept going viral. It got to a point where I wasn't a video I put up that wouldn't get a million views. Mm, wow. Every video I put up got on, a million on views. YouTube. Yep, everyone. Like it was like clockwork. I it wasn't easy to get a million views like that back then. Right. And I would get mad if I had a video and it got like less than a million. I was like, oh, they must so have So you were hitting a million. That. This is what year now? This is 2008? Still uh, well, 2009 no, no, not eight. At that point, it was like, by the time it got that big, it was in 10 to 11. 2011. Yeah. Uh, so 2011 was when it like hit its peak and then everybody knew who I was. It was weird. Like, I didn't know it was a thing until when I went outside, everybody knew who I was. Uh -huh. And it was people in my family <laughs> That was calling me. Mm. Well, before you didn't, you didn't want to let everybody know you was related to me. Now you want everybody to know you related to me, and mm. so it, it became a thing. But with that, I didn't know money was in it uh. until I got this check. Mm. And I think at one point I was making around eighty-five to ninety thousand dollars a month. Wow! Wait, 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 wait. Yes. What were you doing, job-wise before? Oh, before I had retired, because I, uh, you ever heard of a thing called um, Headhunter or Career Builder? Yeah, yeah. Me and my friends developed it. See, a lot of people don't know this. What? That's you? Yeah. We did Headhunter. They bought it from us at Career Builder, and we got rich. So I had money to fuck around. Nigga, you got money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, mentioned this a, he mentioned it a very long time ago <laughs> when Monster. I asked him how he got started. Job in D, Kirby. Yeah, yeah all, all that shit stuff. came from us. Yeah, yeah wow. I'm one of the, I remember we were the first people to build it. I worked at, I remember that you did tech. And, uh, yes. that you, I didn't know specifically that. I remember you told me that you guys had created some software that was very popular and y'all sold it off. Yep. And, uh, okay, so real quick, because a lot of people don't know that about you, because um, you haven't talked about it openly. So you were in tech. You and your buddy started this this company up, which basically, what is it like a parent program that hosts all these different websites that allow people to well, find see, here's what employees. We did. When I when I got out of college, um, we ended up going to work for uh, this company called CDI, which was a subsidiary of ID, IBM. Yeah. Well, what happened was IBM had to. We didn't know it at the time, but it was a big thing as far as these people need talent, and it's a headache for these managers to be looking for. Resumes. Yeah. yeah. So recruitment was a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, knowing that we came from that side, we saw needs that hadn't been developed yet. Like, well, we have all these resumes. We need to keep them somewhere. Mm -hmm. So my friends and I had developed a software that would keep the resumes. And so whenever people would ask for a certain thing, we could sw search the resume on the in-house and then it would pull it up. Yeah. Well, it became a big thing because people were like, that's pretty damn awesome. You could just go to one place and get resumes. Yeah. So instead of just doing it for IBM, we said, well, what if we did it for everybody? Everybody. Yeah. And that's how it was developed. And then a bigger company was like, because, you know, it still was hard for some niggas doing this. Mm -hmm. So a bigger company was like, 
we want to buy. And we didn't really know. So what they did was they hired us over at Career Builder, and then they hired us with stock options. So now we go from having this to now we're working there with these stock options, and then that blew up. So, so y'all had that's equity why, in it, too. Yes. So that's why y'all never seen me in a video where it looked like I was broke. The, the first videos y'all seen me do back in 2000-something, I literally had a studio. Yeah. I remember watching your videos. I don't know what time frame this was, but you were at a big-ass house by a pool. I was, was that in uh, Atlanta? Uh, I think probably at that point I had went over to the West Coast. Uh, that house okay. was huge, bro. I was so, like, come making money. <laughs> <laughs> that's why everybody wanted to get into it. Mm. At first it was this nigga ain't shit, and then they thought... Oh, he got rich off that, but I already had you the already money. Had money, the money yes. And you were able to invest and get into it yes. properly. Mm -hmm. You bought the proper cameras, yeah. you had a good microphone off rip, et cetera, because you had already did you did you sell out your position and just like get into this full time pretty much? Yes. So you sold your position, got out of it. Um like this was just something I wanted to do. I was just fucking about. Gotcha. Did and you I had no idea that there was money in it. Real quick, wow. What did you buy okay. when you got your first big check? Was it like you bought like a car? I had already bought shit, so I just put it in the bank. I already had shit. You know, like I never. You mean, you mean his you first big check from when the, I was getting money? You yeah. never saw my life went up. Yeah, my yeah. car was different. I already had the shit. Like everything they saw, and anybody that's in there can tell you the truth or not. From the time you saw me, I did not like. Oh, you could tell he not getting money because his clothes changed, because his house changed, because yeah, yeah. it was the same shit. Because yeah. you've been the same, I would say, lifestyle wise, from what I was saw on camera at least from that from back then. But I have a theory that, like, for example, people that have money from the very beginning, or at least from a certain point, young, a younger age, they bought everything that they wanted beforehand. So when you see him older, it's like, okay, he has old money, and he's not spending it. But it's because he really did all this fun stuff when he's younger. Yeah. So he don't need that stuff anymore. Well, uh, like, all I did was kept investing in my kid. Like, mm. my kid was everything. So, mm. yeah. um, like, she's always been in private school. She's never had a, never not been in private school. I uh, pay as much for her private. She just graduated. She's on her way to Duke. She's never not been in private school, not a day in her life. She's 18, so that tells you I haven't been doing YouTube for 18 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you so you had that square. What, when, so when, when, how old were you when you, like, uh, cashed out and then went into the broadcasting? I was 33 when I cashed out, but I, wasn't, I was, like, 35 when I went into the broadcasting. I was just looking for something to do. Okay. Um, and I thought. This would be a way for me to just get back and get yeah. back or do something. And I just need time because it didn't feel right not doing work after yeah. I've done work. Yeah, so you we got in not expecting to make money. No. And, and so you get in. I didn't it, make a dime until 2011. Yeah, so from 20, so 33 to 2008, and then you, 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 uh, and then you cashed out at that point, and then 30, with two, three years later at 35, that's when you get your first big check from, was it YouTube? YouTube. It was uh, that AdSense. Oh, wow. Okay. And I said, this is crazy. Yeah. When you left the tech company, were you bored? I know it's a re really simple question, but like, I just think we're like, I think if someone stops working their actual job or career or business and they retire too early, it can mess up yes, like, very much their so. lifestyle. And a how every, do you think? Uh, I was very bored, but I went into that thinking, well, let me do something else. That's why I ended up doing that, though. Because mm. I said, well, I want to have a voice. And I was so used to having a voice. I think that's what I missed. Like, you had to come to me to get your employee to work there. Right. I had to go find this person. You were dependent upon me. So my words meant something. And now my words didn't mean shit at home. <laughs> it is weird. This go, well, yeah, at home. Your words don't mean okay. shit at home. Because you're just, you're just you at home. And you weren't in it for the money. You were in it because you wanted something to do that you loved. Yes. Damn. So I started talking about what I knew. Like, and people will tell you, like, people who went to college with me, mm -hmm. people who know me my whole life, that's why there's never been a video of somebody coming out saying, he's not like that. This ain't who he is. I've always talked like this. I talked like this. I remember when I was in college, uh, my best friend's a girl named Deja. She said, you know how to talk your way into some pussy and talk your way right back out of it. Because <laughs> I would sit up there and I would get the girl and come to the come to the apartment. Then when they'd say something, I'd be like, y'all bitches getting on niggas' nerves. Y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, there you go. Mm. And so I would would ruin the moment because you didn't want to bring me around a bunch of women because I'm going to... Tell them what it is. I'm going to say something. If they do something stupid, I'm going to say it's stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I Thanks. never understood. I do that too. Right. It's yeah. like it's a weird thing. Like, I can't sit up here. Pussy is good, but I can't sit up here just to, to take this stupid shit you're saying just to get it. Y you know what's funny? Yeah. He's the same exact way. Yeah, man. You know what double dates we've been on? And Tommy, I'm like, okay, huh? Myron, just chill, bro. We got this, bro. It's in the bag. She would be like, oh, well, you know, men and women can be friends. I'm just like, 
Uh, <laughs> let this slide. Let the paint. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know what? But tell him, right. we don't do it on the first stupid thing. <laughs> you know, he, he, yeah, he, I, he, I, I love we slide a little bit. I, I don't like it. <laughs> no, you don't. I have to let him do it in for like two no, or three. We got, yes, bro, we don't do it on the first one. We just make a face. This nigga Sarah would be like, that's stupid. He doesn't know. We give you grace. He doesn't debate. Instantly, when they do it too much, it's like, <laughs> that's hey, hold it. on, hold on a minute, second here. We're gonna give you that first like one time. Like one time, they'll say something dumb. I'm like, I'll look at fresh. I'm like, right. this bitch is stupid. <laughs> and then, and then, and then after that, it's like, bro, that was that's not intelligent. Like, and then I'll tell them, like, that do you dumb. remember the Mexican girl Ooh. that was at uh, the sandwich spot, La Sangria? We had two Mexican girls, and it was in the bag. And yeah, she we, was mad because I made a joke, and he made one joke, just one joke about her. I think her parents. Yeah, I said she wasn't that hot. I said she was like a six or something. Bro. He was being honest, though. But, but I'm saying, saying but, but <laughs> I, I'm like, why can't I say it? Like, especially if you're saying, like, if you're a humble five, mm. I'm not going to call you a five. Yeah. If you're a five talking like you're a nine. Yeah. Oh, come on. I got to say something. That's why you ain't never seen me walk around talking about how handsome I am. I know that's a lie. <laughs> I walk by mirrors all the time. That's debatable. I was like, I was wait. And I, but it, it would get on your nerves. It's like Lizzo. Lizzo might be pretty if she didn't say she was pretty. Oh, yeah. Once you say it, and then, no, I got to say something. So that's what it was. Like, with me, I've always been that. Like, I can't tolerate. Uh, I, my grandmother used to say, she don't suffer fools. That was a saying she had. Uh, she doesn't suffer fool. fools very much. <laughs> and I don't either. I Like, I can't. And what was weird is people didn't understand. They said, well, you talk bad about black women. But the stuff I was saying, I was repeating a lot of what I got from my grandmother. Mm. But Caribbean grandmothers and stuff like that, they kind of oh get they're very honest. Yeah. Like, they will say what they see. They'll tell you you stink <laughs> in front of your friends. They'll call you up, yeah. I, yeah, so we're used to that. So I spoke that way. But... I guess I round out the hard way that speaking plain to people, when people don't want to hear that, especially in America where we've exalted women past something. So with the money came the... At first, people just liked it because it was new, and I never ran into any pushback. Mm -hmm. But then there became a community of people who started getting paid by saying, I'm a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And so I created this industry of, A, a bunch of men who call themselves masculinists, red pill, all this stuff. They got MGTOW, all that stuff. They came out and started speaking. But then there was this other half, and the other half was the problem because these dudes were, the best way for me to get pussy is to go against that guy who I believe the girls hate because of what he's saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I hate those dudes because they know when the women aren't around and I'm sitting in front of them, they agree with the shit Facts. I see. Yeah. They put the fucking cape on for the girls. Yeah, yeah. They, they know it's bullshit. So they saw there was a, a a place where they could make money by A, saying you're anti-black by talking about the black woman because they would never say that if you were talking about the black man. If you're putting a black man in this place, everything is fine. But they realized that the women suffer from insecurity. And they're jealous of white women and they're jealous of everything else. Like you hear these people, they call themselves the blueprint. You heard how many times you heard black women call themselves the blueprint. Well, who the fuck is following it? Like, who's trying to be you when you can't be yourself? You're walking around with somebody else's hair on your head. So I told them. <laughs> so I told them. I, don't, I no longer call them. Weaving yeah, I never called them the blueprint anymore. I call them the blueprint. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn, dog. Oh man, yo. Uh, so, so you, so you got on and you started talking about men's issues, right? And you started talking about um, the bullshit men got to deal with when it comes to women, um, the double standards, etc. Yep. You started talking about the, the just the male experience in the United States in, in 2008, and then you also did something where you were calling out the black woman, right? Let's be honest, there's a lot of fuckery going on yes. with that shit. Well, because uh, you couldn't do one without the other. Yeah. And the, I kept saying, well, in order for me to get the men to realize where they should be, mm -hmm. I have to point out where they actually are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when she yeah. start pointing out to people where they are, they start asking, well, why do you think we're here? Yep. And the biggest reason why black men in the black community is where it's at is black women. And so that's what I started saying. Mm -hmm. As long and, and it goes back to what people say, well, you're blaming the women. And I explained to them. Telling someone where they are isn't necessarily blaming the other person. It's telling you you have to take control of it. The alcohol 
is what's making the alcoholic the alcoholic. But if you break it down, the alcoholic has to just stop wanting the alcohol, stop drinking the alcohol. Yeah. That's it. So the kryptonite to the black man was literally he was raised by this woman who he believed was a god. Mm. And once that god, and once you have a god, the god can do no wrong. Yeah. Everything you do is causing the God to do something bad to you. And that's what black men are. Nobody sits there and just blame God. You can't blame God. So you have you ever noticed, even like in the story of Job, when shit was going wrong with Job, what did his friends do? Well, it must be you so you're doing something to cause that. And Job was like, No, I'm not. But they say, Yes, you God isn't just going to have things like this happen to you if it's not your fault. So whenever you're a God, you're never at fault. If anything goes wrong in that person's life, it's them. So I was trying to get the black men to know their worshiping of black women is what's causing them a problem. Mm -hmm. And that's when it went downhill. And that's when the men started realizing, well, wait, there's money in worshiping black women. So mm -hmm. the whole money game switched where, okay, I'm making this money and I'm just putting it aside. And that's to lead us to where we're going as far as, like, how do you survive in this? Don't be a dick. And as soon as you get your first check, hit the club. Mm, yeah. mm. Two, if you're going to, and I do teach a class. Like people come to my website and they ask me how to, how to work it. So I'll give you all some. I can't give it all. Oh, of course, yeah, of course, course not. Course, it, get the rest it, of it at the website yeah. at tjskoc.com. Damn. But one of the things that really bother me is that black folks look at this as a hustle. Okay. And that's not a real business model. Let me explain. 100%. Okay. They'll walk into it, and the first video, it'll be two motherfuckers in their um, comment section. And won't now know them, one of them be their relative because they know they're stupid. When you can't even get a relative to come watch your shit, you ain't, you ain't shit. Like, nobody in your family will watch you, nigga. Your first people watching you should be the bitch you fucking, the niggas you hang with. It should be a crowd, at least, so that lets you know something. But... <laughs> You sit there, and the first thing you do is hit my cash app. Nigga, we don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Create an audience, and that's the biggest thing. And now don't only create an audience, but an audience that's loyal to you. Yeah. Right now, you see people like J-Lo finding that out. She had to cancel her tour because the difference between J-Lo and the Rolling Stones, and J-Lo has put out music before the Rolling Stones, uh, later than the Rolling Stones have, but the Rolling Stones have no problem with selling out. Why? Because of quality and quantity. Yeah. They have a lot of hits. You guys, y'all have done so much good shit that y'all can now take it on the road. Yeah, mm -hmm. Y'all can go to a city and be like, hey, we're here. Show up. Come see a nigga. Like, people looked at me, and they didn't understand how I was able to do shows around the country twice, did two tours, sold them out. Mm -hmm. Well, how I do that on my own? Had a name. You got a big enough name, you can go somewhere, motherfuckers will go, and they'll pay. But you, it's the same way Facebook was started. Facebook had no uh, ads. It was free. They weren't trying to get you out of shit. What did they do? They waited till you used it so much that now I can start charging. Now I can start saying, and that's a proper business model. Even the crack guy. The crack guy will give you a hit for free, <laughs> won't he? Yeah. yeah that's true. There's a book by Gary Vaynerchuk <clears throat> called Jab, 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 Hook. So you give, 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 and then you take. Yeah, like it's it's, it's it's a law. It's strange that we as black folks don't really understand that. That's why if you notice black businesses are more hustle than actual business models. Mm. That's why you always hear black folks say to each other, Oh, I get your hustle, bruh. I get your hustle. It's always about a hustle a con. Uh it's a Nigerian in some damn white linen trying to tell you about a prince. <laughs> <laughs> it's always let me let me try to steal from you and take from you. Even the black colleges, you've watched how many of them went under because the black president will get in there and steal all the fucking money uh. instead of do like the white presidents do at Duke and take some of the fucking money. You at least <laughs> want them to be able to pay the bills. Like yeah. what the fuck you you go to uh what was it uh. uh Clark University. They went there and the, the fucking lights was off. How do you have the lights off? Uh, uh, there's someone that was going to build a school. Uh, <laughs> Don't what's, you do what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? I'm not going to There will be no Dr. Umar Johnson talk up in here. I ain't saying say sir. Uh, you can't I'm talk bad about Dr. Umar Mama. Dr. Umar Mama. Dr. Umar Mama. <laughs> I ain't say nothing, man. <laughs> 
I ain't say nothing, man. Somebody else took money for a museum and took the mirrors to build that shit. <laughs> there will be no Tyreek the Chief bad talk. I will not let you sully the lip smacking Max name. I will not let you do this. Yes, the lip smacking Mac. He is out there telling people to watch out for the white man while he laid up with a Jew. <laughs> oh! The irony. Yeah, it uh, is. <laughs> Tyreek and she done done everything. This man done made R&B records. He done been a pimp. <laughs> he done, he ain't tell him. I'm not lying, Mo. He's he has done lying. it all. He's not he lying. been in a video with Puffy yeah. <laughs> with a white face on. Had a white face on. Like he was actually doing white, but Tyreek has done it all. He was in a, 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 a video called, yeah, it's for y'all time. If you look the song, who that is? That's your my baby daddy. Who that, that is? is? Baby daddy, yeah. Tyreek was in that. Tyreek has done he everything. He does not. I swear to God, you go look at it. I, he does not. He was the guy that the 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 <laughs> video was about. These people on this television show. Tyreek was on the television show. Oh. So Tyreek has been trying to be in. He did a movie with um, Michael Moore, where he's a pimp on uh, Capitol Hill. No lie. He's up there with a white Fuck. woman, jumps out of a Bentley, and he goes and talks to the people at Capitol Hill, re really walking up to actual senators, asking them questions as a pimp. What the <laughs> fuck? Not lying. <laughs> to anybody in the comment section, tell them I'm lying. He wow. got to look up, look up his, his CD cover for his rap album called Wash Your Ass. What? That was the name of his al one of his three albums. It was called Wash Your Ass. Your ass. No way. And when he puts up the picture of the album cover, you're going to die laughing. <laughs> Don't say that about it, Mo. Just put up the picture of him saying, wash your ass. It's a real thing. <laughs> and I'm telling <laughs> you, see what people say? I don't lie on people. If I say something and, I'm, and if I make a joke, you know why people like my jokes? Because it's real shit that is. No way. He throwing up a gang sign that ain't a gang sign. This nigga is got, he literally got a song called Throw Your Gats in the Air. He got another one called Where My Pistol Go, Pap, Pap. I want to hear you go, Pap, 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 Pap. You fucking with motherfucking killers on a gorilla. I'm just a, he said the cocaine dealer, a real nigga. That's what he said in his song. Damn. Bro, what the fuck? Who is this guy? I know you didn't come for this shit, what but this is what you get. I didn't know that about, about him. Like that's crazy. Oh, like, wow. Steve, you gonna see the picture of him as a pimp on Capitol Hill with this white woman getting out of a Bentley? I am not making this up. Damn. You could go see the picture. So he went, went from Puffy. rapper to pimp to now he's a race grifter. Thank you. That's the point. And even then, when he started that off, you remember he was doing hit and colors, so he was shouting out Africa. And now he calling people tethers. His first shit was hitting colors, and all he did was talk about Africa and how great it was. Now I'm not black, according to him. That, that's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> even, and these people even did one of now my. Now you, you, are you a foundationally black American? Some bullshit about that. It's the most ridiculous I mean, he, shit. I mean, he made a special about when, Haiti. Remember yes, when? He yes, he did a special about Haiti called yeah. 18. Was it 18 1804? Yeah. Now, now it's it's y'all 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 tethers and now, and we, now we not black. Now, Haitian's not black. And none of those niggas are listening to the fact, and this is no, the thing right. about blacks. That's it's right. been so easy to grift black people. Yeah. Because whenever you have someone that has low self-esteem, they will listen to you lying to make them feel good. They just want to be a part of something. And you will always be able to get them to, to move. They will always listen to their leader because they want to feel included. I remember as a brother that wanted to find the light. What? Brother Paul Light. And he did. <laughs> Same thing. It, it, you know what I mean? It, well, it, he was another one. Yeah. He was able to get all those black folks to believe everything he was saying, and then what happened? He found the light. What? what? A he, white light. He, what? He, what? No, well, he got the white, white woman, <laughs> but then he ended up doing the thing he did with the... Like, come on. Yeah. And I've been telling them. Uh, another one. Uh, what was the one? He said he was going to fight me when he started off. Uh, fuck, young Pharaoh. Now he's going around talking about black bitches ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to fight me because he said the black woman was God. Somebody said, what about when Tyreek walked up on you, Tommy? I'll explain that. Let me explain this. Sure, they said Tyreek walked up on me. Black TV? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And even Vlad just said on his own show, Tyreek didn't do anything. He had a phone in one hand and a train in the other. So niggas are saying I got pumped because a man walked up while I was in an interview. It's like somebody walked in right now with a train and a phone. 
and then walk out, and he punked me. He didn't put his hands on me. He didn't touch me. He didn't mush me. He didn't anything. But these niggas don't like me so much, yeah. they will say that's a win. 100%. How is that a win that you're in an interview and someone walks in, what was I supposed to punch him? Because he got a phone in one hand and a train in the other. I'm going to punch him. He's yeah. a train? He's, he's like, a I'm coon a, train. He's like, I'm going to give he's, him a prize. A coon being, train. Being a coon. I'm like, okay. And like, these niggas are so lame. Though. He walked up on you. <laughs> and like, to, and, and even, even, um, even Vlad said, if he really wanted to fight him, he would have waited for him in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. I walked in by myself. I walked out by myself. But these niggas are saying somebody did something to you. And again, these are the same black folks who want you to feel sorry when white people actually punk them. So when they tell me Tyreek punked me, you know what I tell them? What? The white man punked your granddaddy and great granddaddy and great granddaddy and your grandmama. That's why the white man was fucking your mama. That's why the white man was fucking your grandma. That's why you got so many different colored niggas in your family. That's why you right now holler hands up, don't shoot, instead of shooting the white man. So don't tell. If you believe in punking and you think punking's a good thing, every time white people done punked your black ass, we should be saying, white folk done punked you. They didn't just walk up on you, nigga. They put you in chains. Damn. Yeah, um, <laughs> and they never and and you, for you it, and Vlad never put that interview out, right? No. So I believe it, that's why I believe it was a setup. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. why does he keep he keep talking about it? When did this interview happen? It's just two thousand and like fifteen or sixteen. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. But he keeps talking about the interview. It wasn't me. He would go on oh, different Tariq shows. Talks about it. No. No, Vlad. 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 He oh, talked about Vlad. it with y'all boy. Oh. No w jumper. Oh, he the, the gerber. The guy looked like a gerbil a little bit. Oh, academics. Yes. He oh, knows, oh, he academics. Knows. Academics. Oh, mentioned no academics. That's messed up that you knew that when I said that. That's your boy. You supposed to say, nah, I ain't going to say this. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What if I said the nigga look like a gremlin? You like, oh, that's Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga with the little dick, nah. Bob, I know you're talking about. Nah, yeah. but my nigga's cool, man. He, he was in way. He's doing his thing. I can't school. Yeah. But I know I, I know he did an interview with, with Blad, and Blad brought it up. Brought it up? On his, Why? his interview. Thank you. I don't know. Uh, How did that even get into that topic? It was random. It was he said, you know, because you know, I don't like some people. I don't like doing business, like you know, you know, Tommy Sotomayor, and then um, academics like, what you got oh, against? Yeah. What yeah. you got against him? Vl Vlad has a problem with um, anyone that uh, um, that makes any type of content that criticizes black women. Yeah, because his staff, that, is, yeah. his staff is black women. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he he said he would never do Kevin Samuels again. He wouldn't do he, anyone from. He won't our, do us. He won't do us. Like he won't do anybody in our thing because because of his staff uh, hates our guts, bro. Yeah. But this was 2016. Why the fuck did he bring me on? I didn't it's, ask. I didn't know who he was. Probably before he had a bunch of black chicks working for him. <laughs> nah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, probably. And, and so it's it's a crazy thing. So when people again, and I know we, we well, interview we murderers, thank he'll you. interview criminals. Kingpins. He inter interviewed kingpins. Yeah. Mm. He interviewed the worst people that literally commit crimes against humanity, but he won't. But, but he, not us. But dudes that go in and criticize. And very real real criticisms of the black community won't touch it. Uh, you, you know why? Then that goes back to what I was saying about they realize you can easily fleece black women. Black women can easily be fleeced. Facts. If you sit up there and see this bitch with glue on her scalp and it looks ridiculous. And yet you still tell her she's pretty. If you're the guy who's selling the glue and you're selling the wigs, you just made a lot of money. Facts. But if you're the guy who says, nah, that looks silly. Grow your own hair. Yeah. Well, you're costing him money. So what is he going to do? He's going to go after you. He's going to join forces with this person. It's the same thing. And I know y'all don't talk about this, but you should. Have you ever noticed that gay men side with black women? Ow. They always do, yeah. Why yeah. do they do this if they're diametrically opposed? Because if you think about what they're doing, Aren't gay men taking men from black women? They, they don't side with white women because they believe white women are taking black men. Why do they side with gay men? Well, gay men are smart. You know what gay men don't do? If you say something that pisses a black woman off, what's one of the first things she call you? Your mama black. Gay. gay. She call, okay. oh, oh, yeah, yeah. She, she call you gay. gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Facts. If you had a white... <laughs> now, imagine if you had a white friend. That's the number the, one counter is you're gay. Yes. Yeah. So, by that logic, imagine if you had a white friend and he was in an argument with a black person as soon as that black person made him mad he's like you nigger <laughs> <laughs> would you just sit there and be like well <laughs> he's talking to you not me <laughs> well that's what gay men do though they never check black women and say if you feel that way about him and that's the first dish you gave him why would i be your friend good point mm -hmm. good point 
You know why they do it? Because they understand black women can easily be fleeced. Pretend to be their friend. It's the same thing the Jays did with the white people. Blend in with them until it's time to separate. Yeah. That is the smartest business you can do. You blend in with them. And Jews don't identify as white ever. Thank you. If you call a Jewish person white, like, and it, and it doesn't benefit, they'll be like, no, no, I'm Jewish. No, no, I'm Jewish. You know what's crazy? Uh, I never thought about My white. grandma survived the Holocaust. <laughs> that, that, yeah. They'll say yes. some shit like that. I never thought about white <laughs> black women are friends with gay p- guys. And then, hold on a second here, but they also enable them to do the fuckery. Thank you. All the time. Because gay men, gay men know all you got to do is prop up black. And here's the biggest part of why you do it. And nobody will tell you this. These are all the original thoughts that they'll try to steal. <laughs> Let me tell you what happens. I told black women this a long time ago, and it's true now, and everybody knows, sees it now. I've never been wrong about anything I've said. Nobody's ever come back and said, you said this in 2013. You're fucking wrong. I've been right. I said, the reason why gay men are your friends is because they realize that the shit that you do makes it easier for them to copy you. Let me explain. If the average black woman walks around with tattoos on her neck and face, you can be a grown-ass man out of jail 20 years and then say you a tranny and you look just like her. (laughs) If her tits and ass is fake. Well, if you're a man and you want to be a woman, you get fake tits and fake ass, you look just like her. Damn. If she wears weaves and wigs all day, every day, now you can literally put on with your hair cut like that. You can put on a wig right now and fool the average black man. Why do you think that the average tranny that's black fools niggas all the time? They look just like fucking Asia doll. <laughs> These bitches, the, tell me it ain't some niggas that's tranny that looks just like Sexy Red. Sexy I'm Red look like Young Thug. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not making this shit up. These bitches look like niggas. Yo. They got hard ass faces. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. I got Yo, a song I sang on my that's show. That's crazy. I said the average black woman ain't nothing but men with vaginas <laughs> with a hard ass face. The men with vaginas twerking all over the place. It's their problem free. <laughs> Philosophy. The men with vaginas. <laughs> They're literally like a new black women go around calling you what? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> black women will tell you to your face. Suck my dick. <laughs> they will. Yeah, they will say. Like that. I have a dick. Why? So you can't tell me that it, that's why those gay men say, yeah. As a matter of fact, most language that black women use is gay dudes language. It's what gay dudes say. Queen and all this stupid shit. It's gay language. <laughs> yes. Gay You're language. Right. The language is from the gay dudes. The gay dudes know that's why they can fuck their man. Why you think half these rappers done suck dick? Because the nigga look like their mama. Then you got. Uh, nigga probably gonna fight me when I leave here. I'm gonna need y'all escort. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, even when you, you look, there was a black rapper, female. One of her lines was pretty like a transgender. Wow. Put this pussy on your chin, call it chin chilla. Wow. A dumbass line, but bitches was like, pretty like a transgender. These bitches think transgenders look better than them. That's how hard these hoes' faces are. <laughs> them motherfuckers, <laughs> oh, just hard face, bitch. And, then, and so, again, I have never been wrong with the shit I was saying. Look at the WNBA. Let me show y'all. Let me, let me tell you something. Now, let me show you something. I want y'all to see that. Did, did y'all hear about uh, the girl who hit Caitlin Clark? Angel Reese. Yeah. No, 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 not Angel Reese. Wait. Angel Reese looked like Sid the Sloth, though. <laughs> Shut yeah. up. Let me talk. <laughs> Angel Reese looked like Sid the Sloth, for real. I'm I'm a, this is the girl who just hit her. Oh, ah. shit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, yeah, I saw that on Twitter. Be- look, yeah, look, I saw that on Twitter. Can we pull that up for the people? Yeah, pull it up. Yeah, let's pull it up yeah. on Twitter oh, for the niggas. Nice. That motherfucking cam- These niggas' cameras clear as shit. I'm robbing them before I leave. I'm letting y'all know this. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck going on, but this shit is... That's funny. But now, her name is not Kennedy. It's Chinity. So look up Chinity. Uh, C-H-E-N-N-E-D-Y Carter. Ch- yeah, Chinity, yeah. Yeah. Ch- First off, again, Myron, I'd like for you to look at this woman's face. 
Why would you name your child Chinity with a chin like that? That's a damn joke. Look at this hard face, bitch. Damn. Her face is hard enough to cut diamonds. <laughs> Dilly, you laughing. She said, my God, this is a hard face, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a woman? Yes. I thought it was a transgender. The average black woman looked like the average black man. That's why. That's and I'm not even being funny. Wow. That's a hard face, bitch. That's scary. Yes. Could you imagine being drunk in a club? <laughs> then you won't walk into that, bro. Can you imagine letting her give you head? That big old hard ass face, she'll break your pelvis. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, man. That's scary, hey, bro. Yeah. What's yeah. The fuck, no. man? Yo, you see why I don't get drunk? Yeah, <laughs> that's why. Sober, nigga. So I'm, so, so I'm saying, like you, and, and this, and these bitches are set up that just talking about some weed or blueprint of what? He's some hard ass bitch. Bitches just broke face holes, and then uh, constantly when you cannot walk out your house. I was when I was walking up in here in the building. It was a bitch out there. I don't know if you saw her. <laughs> I don't know if you saw her, Myron. It's a bitch out there with this stupid ass bag on their head. You know, I call it a Jiffy Pop bag because it looked like when you pop the Jiffy Pop and it get big. That's what they when they had these bonnets on their head. So <laughs> she's walking out in the middle of the day. Yeah, it's seven o'clock with a bonnet on and night clothes, walking down in Miami. You saw what I saw when we went to the club. Yeah, I was gonna say something about it, but I didn't. I'm gonna say it now because I feel safe. Oh. We was at the club, and I noticed VIP was full of non-black women. Yeah. The niggas that came in there, if you wanted to have a good time, you had a bunch of non-black women. They can't compete down here. Yeah. They really can't, bro. They can't. Yo, That's they true. come to, They come from Atlanta. <laughs> grand opening, bro. grand closing. They're coming in, and they're gone. <laughs> bro, yo. Yo, I'm telling you. All the stars. Am I not, bro. Yo, all the celebrities that I know. The baddest bitches from Atlanta come here. They curved. But yep. hold, on, they, they, hold on, They can't get in the top sections. When girls are scouted to go to these events and to these VIPs, you know who they pick? The white girls, Spanish girls, Hispanic. but not the black girls. Hey, black but, girls? Bro, okay. even white girls but, struggle to compete two. down here. But that's it. Even white girls struggle to compete down here. That's yeah. why they're asked to go for a lot of their life after a year. <laughs> that's yes. the truth. Ooh. Yo, that's Ooh. in South Miami. Yo, Yo. anyone that lives Ooh. here in Miami, y'all know. Yo. A bad white bitch comes here, Yo. moves here. Yo. She's Yo. here for a year, two years tops. That is so true. She gone. I swear to you, bro, if you go to Florida right now, Hella white girls. They said they had to go. They had to go north. No, I said they were here in Miami. Yes. At some point, this and nah, can't compete. No, let me go. And they go move there. They move. It's true. It always happens, bro. Yeah. I'm it's telling you, man. It's true, bro. Even bad white bitches come here. They're here for a year, and they get the fuck up out of here and go to Fort Lauderdale, the bro, because they can't chicks. take it no more. The Spanish, mm -hmm. Spanish girls take over here. Yeah. Um, it, you, it, girls come from other cities. It's always funny when I see like you know bachelorette parties and shit like that come here of like, these old white hoes from Chicago and shit like that that think I'm a lawyer I'm a doctor or whatever they come here and they do their bachelorette party no attention bro nobody's talking to them the fat black chicks that come from Atlanta they all successful yeah I got my own come here no nobody. attention bro nobody gives a fuck about them because here it's like we have so many attractive women like the average girl here in Miami is like a baddie if you put her anywhere else she's Ooh. like a 10 but here she's yes. like a 5 or a 6 she's regular but yeah, sorry, you were saying. No, no, you uh, and listen. Let me tell you something. We, 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 I think we are, we are tickling some ears here because I'm watching the people in the comment section. They saying, we, we hitting that spot, and I, and I believe it because I'm telling you, when I went and and um, my my boy Fresh took me to more than one spot. Yeah. So it wasn't like I got one spot to look at. He took me more, more multiple. Where, where'd spots. you take him, just so the people know? Um. I don't or you wanna, don't want to say? I don't want to say. Oh, okay. No, yeah, you no, no. took me to three spots. I think it was three, yeah, right? Three, three. You took me to three places. Mm. And all three of them, I kept saying, <laughs> one, and women are fine as fuck. Yeah. But two is black men, black men well off, but they non-problematic. They ain't out there thugging. They just regular guys look like they doing well. Yeah. And in their sections, who were they buying drinks and stuff for? Who were they inviting in their sections? It wasn't these hair-hatted hooligans that they knew was going <laughs> to act a motherfucking fool again. And they knew it though. So who wants to bring that problem? And that's all I've been talking about since 2009 is the problem is what people are getting tired of. Mm -hmm. People don't want to see that shit. Look at what y'all did in Miami. We learned about it up in Atlanta because of black women coming to Miami for, um, 
spring, spring break, break and fucking it up. Memorial weekend, all yes. that stuff. Yeah. Y'all literally, the stores just decided to close down so they'd have nowhere to go. And then you saw online black women on their Instagram and shit complaining about, we don't have nowhere to go. They done shut the beach down. The stores ain't open. They blah, blah, blah. People are tired of dealing with your ass. People are, I said about Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is going to leave the WNBA and let them have the black women. If you're going to sit up here and um, kowtow to these chicks, who I know are doing wrong, then let me go somewhere else. Let me take my talents somewhere else. And I think that's what we're missing. We're not realizing that they're the problem. Black men are more unproblematic when they're places. You watch us all over the city. Brothers is doing well, ain't out here acting a fucking fool. Mm -hmm. When do they act a fool? When they got black women with them. I'll tell you this. You made a very good point there. Even in this setting that we're you know, in Miami, the black guys that are here are well-educated, have a good job, and they know that's stupid. Nobody wants them. So why do that? Thank you. And they're smart because they know in this environment, I got to be a certain way. Versus South Beach, ratchet niggas, smoking weed, going crazy. And guess, guess who's there? Black women. That's the only one. <sighs> I'm telling and, you, bro. And, and, and it is a thing, and I am not trying. It's like I look at things from a coach's perspective. Mm -hmm. If I was a coach of a team, and my team is in last place. I have to tell them that we're in. We gotta acknowledge I'm in last place. We're in last place, and we have to acknowledge why, why, why? we're in last place. That is the only way we're gonna be out of last place. I cannot go in there and tell my quarterback he a king. You a king, bro. You the best thing ever. He sucks. He sucks statistically. All we all most people are doing to black women is giving them statistics. St Statistics, and they don't like the statistics. So again, when it comes to uh, when it comes to making money, and I know I keep jumping back and forth in it because I'm very passionate about this. Though, yeah, like you yeah, said, yeah. this is my thing. If it, other than JFK, uh, so, but if you wanted to make this a thing, and I hate pushing this part of it because we talked about it in the last show, where sometimes the rock people like the Rock, if they want to make sure they make money, they have to go not where they really feel. They have to go with what's popular. So you might be able to make money in social media right now if you tout trans kids, L LGBTQ stuff. Because, yep. like, when I don't know if y'all saw it, the clip of me being on, um, on uh, Fox News uh, like a week ago when we were talking, and I found out that they were giving out millions of dollars. To who? To queer podcasters and transformers. Really? Trans like government grants? Yes. Wow. Millions. And I told him, I said, "Well, shit, I'm an independent." Let me guess that they have to that they have to also like support the Democratic Party and yes. shit like that. Yeah. Yo, Tommy, you should address that for one day. No, that's what I said. <laughs> I, I, I told him. Huh? Yo, listen, I'm over here too, bro. I told him, and I said, switch. I'm going to be a transformer, a farmer, <laughs> and I'm going to go out there and show my tomatoes to the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and you so, got a lot of grants for being a farmer yeah. too. Yeah. So I, it it doesn't make sense that we are pushing, but if you are trying to get money. It's like Dwayne Wade. I know y'all love him down here in South Beach. Oh, man. But you see what he's doing with his Yeah, it's kids. bad, bro. But it's money, though. He's doing that with his son. But if he's willing to sell out his son... That makes sense. That, yeah, because I was wondering why the fuck is he you pushing know this why? shit so hard. But yeah, he's, he's probably getting in, a bag. But, but you know what it is? Yes. Think about it. They haven't really done anything crazy, but they're always in commercials, always in movies, because they're pushing the agenda. Always. Front and center. Yeah. So if you, and that's what's like, if you want them, that's why those brothers are coming after y'all. They want to see y'all. That's why a lot of me and we saw that were conservative before mm. switched to being liberals. Yep. It's very hard living to do what we're doing and be successful. Because one, if you're talking to men, men will still, we, they'll sit up here and cheer us on and be like, yeah, you right about these hoes. And then go and right doors. to the fans right when, when they yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and yeah, the thing is, they'll, they'll cheer you on behind closed doors, but in real, in real time, 
They're doing the, it's the opposite. Yeah, because I watched them. I said, now, if I was a bitch up here and I just had my titties out just being stupid, you ever seen one of these bitches uh, podcast or whatever it is, and it'd be just money just going up and down. This bitch is just sitting up there in a bra doing absolutely nothing. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a girl on the show. Twitch streamers, Twitch streamers, yeah. Like yeah. female Twitch streamers. I they get paid. I won't say who it is. She was on the show sitting actually right here a couple uh, months ago. She came on acting a fool. You know what she said after the show? Within an hour, she had 10K See? new members. You know what it is. And I'm like, are you no, serious? You know, I'll, I'll tell you after. Okay. And I was like, what the F? No, I said, so these niggas could laugh. <laughs> no, so they could be pointed out. Wish you could yeah. point them out. Because they're the ones who did it. And then they were ro- they were roasting her on the show, talking but, smack about her. And I'm just like, wow, that's crazy. Y'all were talking about how dumb this person is, how stupid this person is, who would ever want to be with them. And then yeah. as soon as the show's off... Y'all up there running behind this bitch because you want to be with him. Why do you think women have no problem with being open whores? That's why I was telling y'all when them girls were said last time. Oh, they'll be able to find and a man. And disrespectful to men, too. Yes, most, they'll most be able to find a nigga. Yeah. Most women don't respect most men. And then, hold on. They don't. She mentioned that. They said, oh, don't mind fresh and, and uh, I'm, I'm Myron. They just talking smack. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're going to find your, your dream man. I'm just like. And because of that, she'll stay in that space of delusion forever. But yeah, that's yes, that's, that's real and, life, and and that's what I, I keep talking about. That's what I said. These men have made it to where it's a real thing. We talk about who's actually getting pussy, and the reason they're not getting it is the reason that they're also spending the money on the women. Like yes, the men the are giving them hardcore real shit they can use, but they see us as men, and they will never spend money with other men. Yeah, speaking of money, we have some chats here, but also as well, think about this: they'll spend the money on OnlyFans. But don't support us. That's what I said. And staying on platform mm-hmm. and being relevant. They don't care what happens to y'all. Yeah, they they, don't care. Now one of us can sit up here and come on our show and be like, you know, a brother n- want to go to uh, Dubai for the weekend. Y'all hit the cash app. And they'll do it. But it's women they've never met who have said, I need to get my tits done. They don't know this woman. She'll start uh, a GoFundMe. No and they send money to this woman. She brought them nothing. Yeah, no value. Yeah. That's the biggest thing is like... Um, you know, because people try to sit there and be like, well, you guys, you guys are no better than OnlyFans girls because you got to get a subscription. But it's like, no, we have to provide value Thank for you. guys to fucking be able to like, that's the difference is a male content creator versus a female creator. Like female creators don't have to bring any value at all. And we actually- If you look at all the top females, right, that make the most money on the internet, right, whether they're Twitch stream or whatever, they don't provide any, Pokemon, all these hoes, they don't do shit. They just sit there on their stream. And, and notice what they did. They jumped into male spaces. Those men yeah. were playing. Yeah. So it started out with the men were playing video game. What did they say? Y'all lame for playing the game. Then they saw y'all made money. The bitch put on no clothes and tried to play the same game you and were they're playing. Trash. I can't tell you how many girls come on this platform, play the part to act like, oh, yeah, I believe I'm also a red pill as well. I believe what you're saying 100% because they know if they side with this, make content, they'll go follow her as well. It's crazy. <sighs> Castle Club. And chats? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. We, need, we need the real sauce for a Money Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, me. guys, we're going to... Um, so what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to actually... We're, we're going to stay, uh, like, the stream going on Castle Club, right? So the stream's going to continue on. So if you guys want, like I said before, CastleClub.tv, come on over. We're going to do a Q&A with Tommy and, and finish the show over there. Um, and then girls. And, and, and then we'll have uh, the girls show after. But, um, but we're going to stay on Castle Club, and we'll have the Zoom open. So oh, shit. we'll be able to stream the Zoom call. So let's uh, go. Free all ninjas, okay? Um, I just confirm with Bills that we can do it. Um, what what do we got here? Ready? All right. Ready? Yeah. Um, Santos says, this said, "What? Why Castle Club? What about us subscribers? Nigga, what are you talking about? Us subscribe? You're subscribed if you're on Castle Club. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is he talking about? Where uh, us subscribers? What are you talking about? Um, because I don't think Rumble has a subscription service anymore, he, bro. He's capping. He actually pays for Castle Club. Oh, he's capping. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, F and F. What are your thoughts on married women? There is a married woman all over me. Should I smash or not risk it? She's down to come over, but I feel guilty smashing Tommy, her on I don't his hear, wife. Hey, take on this. Should he smash a married woman that's all over his ass? What do you think? The first off, this is where y'all gonna probably not agree with me. Mm-hmm. I believe in um, if you marry, I will not mess with a married woman. I believe in karma, but I guess karma ain't real because I done had a nigga fuck my bitch and I and he didn't he didn't give a shit she was mine. So I mean, life happens. But I just believe in if you get married, that's probably why I'm not getting married because I don't trust women like that because women don't give a fuck about their pussy no more. 
And niggas, do, and niggas will fuck anything moving. That's why trannies out here winning, because niggas is fucking them, too. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying. If trannies weren't winning, they wouldn't be out here as bold as they are. Do you know how many married women are here in Miami getting, getting down? smashed down? Actually, one of the girls that we met, that, nah, I, that, that I met, oh, on you know, that I said, hey, this is so-and-so, she was married. <sighs> I didn't even know. Spanish guy. Columbia. Who's he's at, that lady? He's at home thinking, oh yeah, my girl's gonna be with her friend. Nigga, she bought to get thick. No. But See? he don't know. I'm and that's you. why I just don't trust. I'm not marrying these all these bitches. It's wild, bro. No, I don't trust them because it, we have told them that their value stays the same even though they fucking around, even though they done had 98 bodies. Literally, women's value don't change because these men aren't looking for anything anyway except the the, the next person they can sleep with. So the women's attitudes towards sex is the same as the men. So, no, I'm not cool with it. Yep. Well said. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, did you want to make the switch right now? No. Uh, let's do the chest first. Okay. Yo, Martin, how do you feel about them boys taking over Mexico? Yeah, that's crazy. Mexican president is a Jew. Uh, Martin, hey. Mexico elected a woman Zionist Jew and LGBT. What the fuck is this world coming to? We should just invade Mexico and make it part of Texas. Who's going to stop us? Mexican military. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, bro. Actually, I mean, that's kind of crazy. Remember we said... On a podcast a while back, I think it was with um, either Ray Dawson or the other guy. Um, it did take over Mexico. That's a key point. What? Remember, it was an example that he said, uh, if they take over a certain point close to us, it's a key point to get. Oh, For, proximity. Proximity. Um, He's saying they're, they're like taking, it's like when uh, taking, their favorite person, Hitler, when he took one thing, he took more things. It went in order. It's a domino effect. Oh, but the Jews already run America, so it don't matter. I think it was they what he's saying, Mexico. the domino effect but, but over he, in uh, the whole, you're saying now they're, North, yeah. uh, they're uh, everywhere. North America, then yeah. they're just going to domino yeah, all the way yeah. down. They, they, expanding they, everywhere. They run the whole first world, man. Yeah, like, That is 1,000% yeah, true. You know, what, people try to sit there and say America is run by, by uh, APAC and all this other stuff. That's true, but uh, don't act like you guys aren't run by them in England either. The Rothschilds are British, motherfucker. Like, mm. no, no, but you forget about that shit. They're white. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's how you get away with it. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? What else? Um, they're talking about the president of Mexico. Um, how y'all should have kicked that nigga out last show? Have the audacity to do all that talking under his breath, but wearing shoes and no socks. Nigga, dirty, crooked, teeth, musty, low life, and good times, goofy. Yeah, Chris was gonna beat his ass, bro. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Chris was gonna whoop his ass. He said he called us. Uh, he called me a bitch ass nigga under his breath. And Chris said, "What'd you say?" Hey, I'll I got on shoes with no socks. <laughs> Alboy says Atlanta is the only place in the world where you can find a, B uh, a big black woman with a BBL and a BBC all in one. Goddamn. Hey! <laughs> oh my god. Let's go. Says Tommy. How did you feel about the serial killer that listened to you while he was going crazy? P.S. L. Black woman queens uh, being for what the fuck? Well, first off, sir, what? I want to point out something to you. Just because you can eat a whole bunch of Lucky Charms doesn't mean you're a bad guy. Sir, if you're going to talk about a serial killer, learn how to spell it. I know not everybody's, not everybody's intelligent as I am. I get it. But come on, sir. Don't tell me about no serial killer and you don't like Fruit Loops. But anyway, first off, there was no serial killer listening to me, sir. I, everybody listened to me. Priests, pastors, your mama, sir. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't know a nigga that didn't know me. Cornflakes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What else we got? Uh, oh, sexy red oh, church. Man. Yeah, that's true. That I was like mine. Hey, you right, bro. They do. He does look like her. That's, that is wild. <laughs> FNF, what are your thoughts on married women? There is a married woman all over me. Oh, no, we got that one answered already. Um, Don't do it, bro. And this one got, right. we got answered as well. And then this dude, came, you came out fresh for start crying like a bitch. They made you your song do well. But now it's down the well. Now you're single L. Now you're single L. Now you're single L. Oh, my God. Single yeah. Now yeah. Now yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, Myron Fresh, help me with my friend. He's 27, had a very, very few girlfriends, if any. Definitely no long-term girlfriend. Most likely a body count of less than five. He may, he met a. I'll take one. I see. He met a Latina Muslim, dating for only a couple months, and already engaged to her. Please tell him why that's a bad date, and he can uh, idea and what he can expect. He needs to hear from successful, experienced men. I'll clip your response and send it to him. Save this man. He's not gonna listen. He's not gonna listen to you, bro. I mean, this is a problem with simps. Uh, simps think that their sexual strategy is always the best, when in reality it isn't, and then they end up getting fucked over, and then they try to say, oh well, I made a mistake, and it is what it is. 
He's not going to listen until he gets burned, man. That's the problem with a lot of guys. As a friend, what you can do if you want to, be there for him when it goes downhill. You want to clip it. Hey, stop yeah. being a fucking retard. You want to go in and get engaged to a girl that you met just for a few months. She's going to finesse you and take your money, especially if you're successful. But hey, you're probably going to have to learn the hard way in divorce court like everybody else. But Ooh. hey, man, that's the problem when you guys aren't sexually experienced. I've been telling y'all, people get mad at me. I say, this is why you shouldn't have sex with at least 50 girls. Because then you're able to identify girls that are like you for you, girls that are fucking trifling, etc. And this is an example of what happens when you have sexual inexperience in the modern day world. But the good thing as a man, you've made mistakes and you're smart about it, you can recover from it. And he ain't gonna listen to you, bro. He that's the problem, though. Yeah. So the simps are hard headed, man. Mm. That's that's, that's the thing. That's true. Gonna that's, discredit. that's the thing with simps. He's, he's gonna discredit hard headed. As, as a simp leader, we believe that um, these hoes can be loyal, these hoes can change. We believe that. Oh, it was just this one bad one. Okay, it was just 138, but 139 is going to work out. When you have that 109. Yeah, well, yeah. once that once that once that <laughs> thought process yeah. is in a person's head, yeah. and they're not bad people. They honestly are people who believe in these niggas might have sit up there and watch with their little sister. She was watching um Princess and the Frog and he was sitting right there watching it with her. She was thinking she needs a man to do what the fucking prince did. He thought I need to be like the frog. So a lot of men, that's why you hear these men arguing that you should do things for women. They don't argue that you should let that woman live with what the fuck she did. I, how many times have y'all heard men sit up there and tell y'all, who's going to take care of the single mom's kids then? They need a mentor. No, they need their fucking daddy. If he ain't there, <laughs> then what does she do to run him off? And if she picked bad, why is it my job to save this woman? Yeah. But men won't say that. You have men will beat you up because you won't want they. It's like the movie with... Uh, Derek Jackson, niggas, man. Yeah, like it's like the movie with um, uh, Will Ferrell. When that man ran behind Will Ferrell in the street and said, come back here. And fuck my wife. <laughs> fuck my. These black men are arguing with you. You don't like black women. Well, why would it bother you? You are a black man that likes black women. You should be More glad for you. that More I for don't. You. Want, thank you. More for you. So there's go. something wrong with them <laughs> if they're arguing that you should be sleeping with the women that they want to sleep with. Yeah. Yeah, these niggas is cucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. What else do we got here? Um, we got just watched three hours of Europa. I'm so fucked up, man. It brought me to literal tears. They got my mom, man. I love her, but she's a feminist moron, and my father has no spine to correct her. The world is doomed, guys. Hey, man. Yeah, I posted Europa and, and uh, the full movie for them in, in Castle Club. I, I'll be going in on, on uh, Castle Club. I'll be posting that shit what? for y'all. What? Yeah, I posted it for them so they can what? watch it. Because a lot of these niggas, bro, they'll watch and they see the 109 jokes and, you know, them boys or whatever, but yeah, 9 11. Like, y'all don't know the you truth. You posted it for real? I posted the Castle Club for them. Yeah, man. Bro, you crazy. You streamed it on Rumble, nigga. <laughs> don't, don't act like I'm crazy. You streamed it on Rumble. No, but you did something. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to go as far as me. I'm stupid. But if you can, if you're willing to, to stick your foot in the water, that still takes bravery because yeah. you got something to lose. Yeah. yeah we're posing <laughs> on Castle Club, man. I, I ain't got to lose. I ain't shit. 